Hi there guys, welcome to the Solo YouTube channel. My name's Tom Quayle, and in this video, I want to go through everything you might need to know about using an audio interface with Solo. So we've designed Solo from the ground up to work really, really well using the onboard microphone on your iOS device, be that an iPhone or an iPad. And that's gonna be a really good experience, especially if you calibrate well. However, there is the issue that any noise that's in your room be it someone speaking or a noise outside, someone, you know, bipping a car horn, whatever, could potentially trigger Solo's note recognition algorithm. So how noisy your environment is, is going to affect how well Solo is able to recognize the notes that you're playing. However, when you use an audio interface, you're separating the input of, let's say, your guitar, for example, from any of the noise in the room because you're plugging your guitar directly into the audio interface. And this means that you can make as much noise in the room, you can talk to people, you know, you can have anything else going in the background. You could even have music going in the background if you really wanted to, I'm not sure why you would, or listen to a podcast on another device, for example, whilst practicing with solo. And it's not gonna affect the note recognition algorithm in the app because it's isolated from all the other noise and sounds in the room. But how do you know which audio interfaces are going to work with Solo or with iOS generally? Well, this is down to a feature of particular interfaces called class compliance. Now, class compliance refers to the idea that a audio interface doesn't need a driver to work with iOS or with some other operating systems as well. When you use an audio interface that's not class compliant, say on a Mac or a PC, you need to install drivers, specific drivers, for that audio interface to get it to work with the operating system. Now, obviously on an iOS device like an iPad or an iPhone, you can't install third-party drivers. So a class compliant audio interface will work straight out of the box just using a USB cable and an applicable dongle as well. That's something we'll get into shortly that we'll just plug in and the operating system, in this case, iOS, will be able to immediately recognize the audio interface and understand how to utilize it. Now, of course, we can't list all of the class compliant audio interfaces that are on the market out there, but if you check the manufacturer's website for your particular interface, sometimes it will even say on the box or in the instruction manual, you can find out if your device is class compliant. Now, if your device is class compliant, it's pretty much certain it will work with iOS devices, but there's a little bit more to understand as well, depending on the type of device that you've got. As long as you've got the right dongle, which we'll talk about again in a second, you should be able to just plug that audio interface into your iOS device using the appropriate cables and it will just work. However, if you have a larger interface that requires quite a lot of power draw and it's bus powered. Now bus powered means that the audio interface draws all of its power requirements from your iOS device, so your iPhone or your iPad. You may find that you have some issues with lower powered devices such as standard iPhones and the non-pro iPads. Now, if you have an iPad Pro with a USB Type-C interface, so the single USB Type-C socket as opposed to the lightning port socket that you tend to find on some of the other Apple devices, you should be good to go because that port's gonna draw or push enough power into your audio interface to have no issues. But again, it's gonna be impossible for us to list every single compatible device because we just don't have all of the devices to test. So it's best to check with your manufacturer, ask them whether the device will work being bus powered with your iPad Pro. Certainly on standard iPads, but that's like the iPad Air and just your standard iPads and your iPhones, you may find if you have a larger device that requires more power and is bus powered, you may have an issue. Now, once you've got your audio interface, you've established that it is indeed class compliant and it's gonna work with an iOS device you're gonna need the right kind of dongle because obviously you can't just plug an audio interface straight into the lightning port of your iPhone, for example, or your iPad. Now, if you have a USB Type-C iPad Pro, you can get a USB Type-A to Type-C cable and plug things straight in, audio interfaces straight in. Or if you have a USB Type-C interface, you can certainly do that. However, if you are running a lightning port-based device, all you need is one of these lightning port to USB adapters. Plug the lightning port cable into the actual device and then plug your interface into the USB type A connector on the dongle. If you are running an iPad Pro with a USB type C connection like this one, what you can also do is utilize a USB type C hub. Basically that's a device that allows you to plug multiple external devices into your iPad 
one of which might be, for example, an audio interface. And then at that point, you are good to go. Once you have your audio interface plugged in, Solo will automatically select that audio interface as the input for its note recognition algorithm. You do not need to go into any of the settings and change it to the audio interface. If you unplug the audio interface and go back to your microphone again, Solo will automatically default back to the microphone. There's no device selection required. It all happens behind the scenes. So once you've got your audio interface connected to your iOS device, make sure that you plug your instruments, let's say a guitar, into input one on your device. Of course, if you only have one input, just plug straight into that single input. But for those of you who are using multi-input devices, make sure you plug into that first input. Now at this point, you're gonna to have to set the gain level appropriately on that input so that Solo's note recognition algorithm gets the best chance of detecting the transients or the attack of each note. Now this is a really straightforward process. If you're running a smaller interface, say a single input interface designed for guitar or bass players, you probably can skip this step because there may not actually be a gain control on your interface. This X-tone interface that we recommend here doesn't have a gain control at all for the first input. But if you do have a gain control, all you need to do is make sure that when you play the guitar as hard as you would normally play at the loudest volume, that you're not clipping. Now this is gonna be different depending on which interface you're utilizing, but normally most interfaces will have a clip indicator that will light up red or another kind of color if you clip the front end. Now you can see on this Tascam interface that I'm using here, I'm setting the gain so that I get a good level, but when I play really hard, I'm not clipping at all. And this again, just check the manual or the manufacturer's website for your particular interface as to how to set the gain level appropriately for your particular device. Once you've set the gain, you are almost good to go. The last thing you need to do is go into the settings of Solo and run the note detection sensitivity calibration. And this just ensures that Solo is recognizing those transients that we talked about, or the attack of the notes that you're playing in the most optimized way possible. Whenever you plug in an interface or pull out the interface and switch back to the microphone, you should always rerun the calibration to make sure that you're getting the optimum note detection algorithm sensitivity. If you want to hear the sound of your guitar or bass in the room or through a pair of headphones, of course, take the output from your audio interface. That might be a headphones port, or it might be a line out, or it might be on a more professional interface, a set of balanced outputs. Plug those into studio monitors or use your headphones to be able to listen to the signal of your guitar. That's worth mentioning at this point that if you are listening through a pair of headphones or through your studio monitors to the output of your audio interface, you're going to be hearing the DI'd sound of your guitar. So it's not gonna be the most inspirational sound in the world, but there are ways around that which we will look at in the next section. I also want to mention here that in order for Solo to recognize your notes in the most accurate way possible, we don't allow you to use other audio apps at the same time. So you can't use an amp modeling app at the same time as Solo, for example. So we need to process our sound in a slightly different way in order to have a more inspirational guitar tone. Now, many of the modern amp modeling devices on the market, like any of the Line 6 Helix products, the modern Fractal Audio products, the Quad Cortex that I have behind me, for example, or some of the class compliant amplifiers that have USB outputs on them, can also work as audio interfaces. And they're a fantastic solution for having a great tone when you practice, whilst also getting the sound into solo. They work just the same as a standard audio interface. You just plug them straight into your iOS device using the relevant dongle, and they will work as an audio interface. Now, one thing to be really careful of is that the majority of these modelers and effects processors that work as audio interfaces send out the wet signal, which is your affected signal with delay, reverb, any distortion or amp models that you're utilizing through outputs one and two via USB. And it's these two outputs that Solo is listening to at this point. Now, there are some exceptions to that rule, like the Quad Cortex, for example, sends a dry signal out of output one and two. But the only thing you need to be careful of here is that you don't swamp your sound with delay and reverb and crazy modulation effects when you're practicing, because that's gonna confuse Solo's note algorithm or recognition algorithm. So therefore, it's probably a good idea to practice with light distortion, or with a clean tone, with just a light reverb, a touch of delay if you really, really need it, and therefore you won't be confusing Solo's note recognition algorithm too much. 
This then allows you to send a really nice processed tone to Solo, listen to it in the room or with a pair of headphones and have Solo recognize the notes that you're playing while still experiencing great tone as opposed to a standard DI'd guitar sound. So hopefully this has been a useful video just to give you an overview of some of the reasons why you might want to use an audio interface, the benefits, and also talk you through the process of doing so. Using an audio interface with an iOS device is really, really straightforward and very easy. But as I mentioned before, check out with your particular audio interface manufacturer whether the device is class compliant and what their compatibility with iOS products are. Now we do have on our website, which we will have linked below, a list of interfaces which we have tested with Solo, which we guarantee will work and will give a very good user experience. We particularly recommend the X-Tone series of interfaces from Xsonic for guitar players because they do not require any gain to be set on the actual interface, which means you're getting a really, really optimized experience with Solo. They're also bus powered and work with all of the devices that we've tested with be it iPhones and iPads, even the non-pro iPads. So a really, really nice device that means you don't need to carry a power supply around with you when you're practicing. And it forms a super portable practice solution for Solo. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As I say, I hope that was useful. Make sure you click the like and subscribe button below for the Solo YouTube channel because we will be uploading on a regular basis to this channel with lots and lots of cool tips and tricks for this app. There'll be lots of future updates happening. And of course, we are working on that Android version right now as well. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. Hit the bell notification icon if you would like to be notified every time we upload a new piece of content. Thanks again for watching. My name's Tom Quayle, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.